Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Angular Fundamentals series. In this video, we build upon the Angular demo application, introducing the Angular dependency injection system, and using the HTTP service to retrieve data. There are three coding styles used to facilitate dependency injection. They're named inline array annotation, inject property annotation, and implicit annotation. In our video series, we use the inline array annotation method, which is the approach advocated by Angular. An array contains a list of names of dependencies followed by a constructor or factory function. The dependencies are again listed in the function declaration, and the order of dependencies must match the order in the array. When the JavaScript is minified, the string values are used by, the, by Angular to determine which services to inject into the minified function parameters. The second method of dependency injection is named inject property annotation. I'll switch the greeting controller code to use inject property annotation dependency injection. The greeting controller constructor function is stored as a named variable. The function is then decorated with the inject property, which contains an array of dependency names to be injected in as function parameters. Like inline array annotation, Take care to ensure the array of dependency names matches the constructor function parameters. This method also allows the JavaScript to be safely minified. However, it's a bit more cumbersome to author and requires each constructor function to be declared as a named variable. The third dependency injection method is called implicit annotation. This approach should be used with caution. It will not work if the JavaScript is minified. Since the Angular demo application JavaScript is minified by the gulp process, I will not demonstrate this approach. However, this is what the greeting controller would look like using implicit annotation. Now, I'll revert the greeting controller back to the inline array annotation format. Thus far, we have only injected the scope object into the controllers. Let's modify the application to retrieve the collection of greetings from a separate data file. We'll use the Angular HTTP service to retrieve the file, simulating an HTTP GET call to the web service. Let's get started. In the source main app directory, create a new subdirectory structure named data slash greetings. Create a new file in that directory named greetings.json. I'm going to take the collection of greetings from the greeting controller and write them as JSON into the greetings.json file. The source main app data directory will be served up by the local web server that Gulp runs. This allows us to simulate making a GET request to a server, which returns a response in JSON format. Next, let's update the greeting controller. Remove the static collection of greetings. We need to load the collection from a file that we created. Angular provides a service named HTTP that facilitates interaction with servers using AJAX. First, modify the greeting controller constructor function to inject the HTTP service. Remember, Angular services are prefixed with a dollar sign. Next, we'll use the HTTP service shortcut function named get to fetch the JSON file that we created. The get shortcut function accepts a string containing the URL for the request. It returns a promise object. 
A promise object allows us to add functionality based upon the outcome of an asynchronous activity. We add a success callback function to the promise returned by the get function. The success function will be called when the response is received for the get request and if the HTTP status code of the response is between 200 and 299. The success function returns the same promise object so that it additional callback functions may be chained. We could have chained a function named error to the success function. The error function handles HTTP status codes that fall outside of the success handler range. This is where logic is placed to react to an exceptional condition. Let's run the application to test these changes. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type gulp space run to start the local web server on port 9000. Notice that gulp has published the contents of the new data directory structure to the distribution directory where it's hosted by the local web server. Now open a new browser tab. Press the F12 key to open the Developer Tools and select the Network tab. Go to localhost 9000 slash index.html and press Enter. The application renders the list of greetings just as it did at the conclusion of the last video in this series. Take a look at the Network tab. Notice that the greetings.json file was loaded from our web server by the HTTP service instead of simply being hard-coded within our controller. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel and follow the Lean Stacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com.